Today, we'll be taking a look at the evaporator fan motor on this Whirlpool Top Freezer Refrigerator. Be sure to visit appliancevideo.com where you will find thousands of repair videos on the latest technology. And for a limited time, you can save big on an annual membership and take advantage of all of our premium benefits. Appliancevideo.com. Do it right the first time. Stop. Before beginning any repair, always be sure to disconnect the power to the appliance. It is also recommended to test the outlet for the proper voltage. You will need the following tools to complete this repair. To begin, let's go ahead and open the freezer and then pull out the freezer shelf in order to do so. Pull it halfway, lift it all the way up, out, and then set it to the side. Next, we need to remove the air tower. In order to do so, we'll use a small flat blade screwdriver or something to pry this off right here. You're gonna take that off and just kind of set it to the side. Then we have one quarter inch screw in the middle. Take this out. And we are going to start to remove the air tower by pressing in on the clips on the sides of the air tower. Start to lift up and set it to the side. Next, we'll have to remove these rails as well as these screws in order to take off the evaporator cover. So to pull off on your rails, just slide out. Let's go ahead and set these to the side. Then let's get our screwdriver and remove these two screws at the top. Take these out and set it to the side. Now, when removing your evaporator cover, first we are going to take off this ice maker line cover here. Take out the Phillips screw, lift it up, pull that off. Then we're going to push in on the tabs for the ice maker line to push it back inside here. And we'll push it in one more time so it goes into the actual panel. There we go. Push that in. Then we will need to remove a couple more Phillips screws. Then we'll go ahead and push down this ground, pull out on the evaporator cover, and set it to the side. Now that we have the cover removed, we have clear access to our evaporator fan motor here. Now the main reason why you would need to replace your evaporator fan motor is if it is not running, thus causing the freezer to not be cold enough and the refrigerator would be probably roughly around 50 degrees. This fan circulates air inside of here, but also pushes air down the passage into the refrigerator section. So if it's not working, the refrigerator is basically not gonna cool at all. In order to test it, sometimes you can see a little jiggle and maybe you'll kickstart it and it'll start up. That's an indication that it is bad. Or maybe it's not starting at all. You can undo the wiring harness here and check for 120 volts going to the fan. If you have 120 volts and the fan isn't running, it will need to be replaced. Now, when replacing the fan motor itself, we'll need to take this housing off the back wall. Start by removing your fan blade by grabbing the thicker plastic, grab your fingers around the blade, pull out, we'll set that to the side. And then you have two quarter inch screws that are at the top. Take the first one off. When removing the second, make sure you hold on to the housing so it doesn't hit the evaporator. Then we're going to want to pull this wiring out of the housing and to weave it out. A 
we will pull off the ground strap here. You may have to move the fan around to get your finger under it. Let this drop down. And then we have the Molex for the fan itself. If you haven't disconnected it yet, lift up on the tab, slide out, then set the housing to the side. Now that we have the housing placed on a protective surface, we can go ahead and remove the motor itself. Now, in order to do this, we will need a pair of pliers and you will actually push in on these locking tabs that are holding on the back. So slide it out, do the same on the other one, pinch and kind of slide it out. There we go. Let's go a little bit further on the last one. Slide your motor out and set it to the side. When installing your new fan motor, first you're going to reinstall the grommets on the back side and on the front side. If they stuck on your previous fan motor, make sure you take them off and put them on the new one. And then we are going to get this so that the actual back bottom is facing the top of the housing. So let's get it in place. You may have to move it around a little bit, but that grommet needs to go inside the front. And then this can only go on one way, get it lined up, start to clip it in. Once again, you may have to move it around so that the grommet goes inside the back. Make sure things seated properly. Now we can reinstall the housing. When reinstalling the housing in here, first we are going to bring the ground strap around and reinstall the ground on the fan motor. Then let's plug back in the Molex. I'm going to wrap it around here so that it's not so hard to maneuver. It can only go on one way. Start to maneuver the wiring underneath the strain relievers and keep pulling on that ground until we get all the way to the end. And then start to move your defrost termination wiring around. Bring the termination wiring under and then we are going to line it up and I want you to use your hand to put the first screw in because you may have to feel behind it to see where it goes. You do not want to puncture the wall. All right, then let's slide the other screw in here. Get it tightened. Reinstall our fan blade. Now we can reinstall the evaporator cover. When reinstalling your evaporator cover, there's a couple things you'll want to do. First, we're going to bring it in at an angle. Now you will not be able to see very well, but I'm going to have to bring the ice maker line and put it inside the slotted area here. So what I'm going to do is, is kind of move to the side here, put your arm in however it works for you, and start to stick that ice maker line in. Then you'll find the ground and let's strap the ground up. Then when putting the cover in, you're going to want to put it on top and inside the actual drain pan so that water can go down. And then you'll see when you're pushing it to the back, put your finger in here to lift up on your ice maker water line, push your panel back. And now let's go ahead and reinstall the screws. Let's start with the ones at the top corner here and go across. Then we'll bring this piece in. Now you're gonna wanna pull out 
on your ice maker line. And then we want to slide it in to this piece. Now you have two kind of stakes on the back of it that will have to line up with these. So in order to do it, you'll have the L going toward the outside. So let's bring it in, kind of match up with the ice maker line and pop it in place. And just pull out on your ice maker line here a little bit to clip it into this plastic housing. Let's slide on the cover. Top goes in first, bring it in. Reinstall your screw. Now we can reinstall the rails. Next, let's go ahead and reinstall the ice maker mounting screws. I'm gonna start them by hand just to make it a little easier since it's actually going into the side of the fridge. Tighten them up. Let's go ahead and reinstall the rails. You'll do it where the L is on the front. Slide the first one in. Slide the second one in. Now we can reinstall the air tower. When reinstalling your air tower, first you'll bring it in at an angle, kind of lift it up, and then drop it down so that the styrofoam goes down into the vents, and then push back on the back wall to clip it into place. Get your quarter inch screw and reinstall it directly in the center. We will reinstall the plate in front of the screw. Now we can reinstall the shelf. When reinstalling your freezer shelf, you will put the hooks toward the back, bring it in halfway, drop the hooks underneath the plastic, and that will complete your repair. Thank you for watching another quality video from appliancevideo.com. If you found this video helpful, make sure you click the like and subscribe to our channel.